My dear children, let us not love in word, neither with the tongue, but in deed and in truth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. These words from today's epistle are taken from St. John's first letter, which is in Scripture in the New Testament. And this letter is, in fact, really an extended meditation on love. First of all, the love of God for us, and consequently the love that we are exhorted to have towards God in return. And what we see, first of all, in this letter is that St. John is really fascinated by all that God has done for us. He begins the letter talking about the Incarnation, the stunning fact that God has walked among us, that we have heard him speak, that we have touched him even. And he continues to speak about then the forgiveness of our sins that God has accomplished by his passion. And he also mentions then our transformation with these words, Behold what manner of charity the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called and should be the sons of God. All of this, St. John points out, is to say this simple fact. God first has loved us. God first has loved us. And it's so obvious when we look at the catalog of things that God has done for us, it's so obvious that these things that are done by God are not simply in word, but they are in deed and in truth. God has not simply declared his love. He has not simply said, I love you. But he has also manifested it. Indeed, he has incarnated it. Christ is God, and so Christ too, we can say, is charity. And so we can say charity itself has walked the earth. Charity has spoken to us. We have touched charity. Charity has forgiven us. Those are all true statements because of the mystery and the miracle of the Incarnation. And St. John's conviction of this love of God for us is so strong. He is so convinced of this fact of the love of God for us in the first place that he summarizes it with this famous phrase that the Archbishop, Archbishop Lefebvre, has also taken as his motto, Nos creditimus caritati, we have believed in charity. We have believed in the love of God for us. And that really, that simple phrase could almost be a definition of the true Catholic. Who is the Catholic? One who has believed in charity. One who has believed in the love of God for him. And this phrase, creditimus caritati, we have believed in charity, it's interesting from another perspective too, that it shows a very interesting connection between truth and charity, a very intimate connection. When we say belief, when we speak about one who believes, we're referring to a truth in which he believes. And yet, what is that truth that we have believed in? What is that truth that we have professed? It is charity. We have believed in charity. There is an intimate and tight connection between truth and charity. In a way, then, it's equivalent to say that the Catholic is the one who believes in the truth and also to say that the Catholic is the one who believes in charity. After all, what is that faith that we possess, that we profess? What is the faith that we say is real, is true? What are all these doctrines except those that explain and define the love of God for us. The love that God is, first of all, the Trinity, the three persons loving each other for all eternity, and then the love that God has manifested to us through Christ. All of the mysteries of our faith, which we profess, which we say are true, they are mysteries of charity. And so, because of this connection, St. John can say some very bold things such as the following from this same first letter. He says, God is light, and in him there is no darkness. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. 
And this is a very interesting phrase. We do not the truth. We do not act according to the truth. But he's going further and he's saying we are lying. We do not really profess the truth unless we walk with God, unless we have this fellowship with God. So it's not enough to say that we believe. It's not enough to to just profess these things. We must do them. We must also incarnate that truth in our lives. We must do the truth, according to that phrase of St. John. And again, he is stronger and says, by this we know that we have known God, if we keep his commandments. He who saith that he knoweth him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. And again, that's very strong because we say that we know, and yet if St. John is saying, if we do not do the commandments, we don't know, we have not known, we are liars, the truth is not in us. There is such a tight connection between charity and truth that we cannot have the one without the other. So true belief is not simply saying, it's not simply acknowledging, but it's rather acting on this belief. Only such a one can be said to be in the truth, can be said to have the truth. And what finally is this commandment? What finally is it that we do? St. John is very clear. Dearly beloved, let us love one another, for charity is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. Dearly beloved, let us love one another. It's actually very striking. We would expect him to say that the commandment is to love God in return, but he does not say that, and he is very clear. There's no mistaking it in this epistle. He says it so many times. Again and again he repeats this. My dearest, if, if God hath so loved us, And we know that he has because of what St. John has said. If God hath so loved us, we also ought to love one another. He does not say love God. He says love one another. And in this, St. John is just faithfully echoing the word of his master. For our Lord had said too, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's so clear. It's so obvious And yet we are perhaps surprised that everything would come down to this, to love one another, to have the fraternal charity towards one another. And yet for St. John, this is obvious. This is clear. It can't be doubted. After such a demonstration of God's love for us, one who really believes in this love can do nothing but imitate it. We have seen the love of God towards us, We have each of us personally benefited from that love. And for St. John, it's absolutely unthinkable that we could act in any other way than to reproduce that love, and specifically towards our neighbor. Why towards our neighbor? Because only there can we adequately imitate God's love for us. God has loved us first, gratuitously, spontaneously. It is an all-encompassing love. We can't possibly return that love to God. And so the true disciple looks around for another object, someone that he can love in that same way, someone that he can love in such a way to imitate God and his love. For St. John, that is obvious. And so for him, that love of neighbor is the best manifestation that a person has truly known God, that a person has truly understood the love of God for him, If one does not love one's neighbor, St. John is clear, you do not know the love of God for you. You do not really know God. Everyone that loveth knoweth God, but he that loveth not knoweth not God. He does not understand God quite simply. And the connection here between charity and truth is again, therefore, very evident If any man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. If we do not love, we are not in the truth. Only those who love as God loves, who love one another, are in the truth. And so it is that St. John exhorts us to love in deed and in truth.
My dear faithful, before his passion, after watching the feet of his disciples, Christ had given his new commandment, which we have already cited, that we love one another as he has loved us. And he follows this command with something very striking, a very interesting statement. He says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. We are too apt to reduce the force of these words, or perhaps we assume that they have already been fulfilled in the early church. We know that the pagans said, look how they love each other of the early Christians. But we're too apt to think that it no longer applies. Now that there are thousands and tens of thousands of groups that style themselves Christians, we think that this no longer is true. That is false. The statement is no less true. It's no less strong than it was when Christ first said it. Only the true disciples of Christ, only those are able to love others as he has loved us. And for that reason, this love is that mark. Those who have this love, they are the disciples of Christ. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, says Christ. Father, speak comments on this love, saying that it is so different from all other loves that everyone recognizes it as soon as it appears. It is forever new and unexpected in the world. It is impossible to define since it is a love like Christ's own love. It is his own love by which his disciples also live. And that's the point. This love that we have towards one another It is a participation in the very love of God. And that is why it is always new. It is always unexpected. It is always something unique in the world. Whenever it appears in the lives of the saints, in the lives of the martyrs, we know that is the mark by which Christ is present. The mark which identifies the true disciple of Christ. And here is the point as well that we too, we ourselves, place so much emphasis on faith. We place so much emphasis on believing the truths of faith. And indeed, in the crisis of today, it is necessary to do that. There is no doubt, there is much confusion about the faith, about the things that we believe. But perhaps we put so much emphasis on this, and then we forget exactly what it is that we believe, what it is that we profess, The truth to which we appeal so often, that truth is charity. It is this love of Christ and nothing else. It is God's love that calls forth from us a response, the same kind of charity manifested towards our neighbor. And this is what St. John says again, in this we have known the charity of God because he hath laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. My dear faithful, we have to be honest with ourselves. How can we say that we are defenders of the faith, the true faith, when we cannot forgive a wrong that is done to us? What faith do we profess? What faith do we defend if we cannot exercise at least this charity towards our neighbor? How can we claim to be Christian, other Christs, when we cultivate in ourselves, in our hearts, a spirit of criticism of anything and everything we disagree with, no matter what it is, we cannot be disciples of Christ when this is is what we do. How can we pretend to be preachers of the true faith when we do not live that faith ourselves, a faith that calls us to the same meekness, to the same generosity which marked Christ throughout his life? We are only disciples of this master If we have his charity in us, St. John is clear. And of course, it does not mean to deny any doctrines of the faith, but it means to realize that the doctrine of the faith is the love of God for us, manifested completely freely and spontaneously given, and therefore inspiring us to love one another in the same way, to love our neighbor, even those that, that are our enemies, even those that have harmed us, Christ has done this. That's the measure of our charity. That is our master. And so it is that amidst all of these great feast days that we have celebrated, Trinity Sunday, Corpus Christi, and now the Feast of the Sacred Heart, there's only one message that the church is giving us here that she wants us to take to heart, to understand, and that is the words of St. John again. 
This is the declaration which you have heard from the beginning, that you should love one another. That's it. He's so clear. He's so strong. There's no way to, to read it in any, other, in any other sense. We must love one another. And that's indeed the story told about St. John himself towards the end of his life. He was getting old and he repeated again and again, my little children love one another. And his disciples would say to him, you always say that. Why don't you say something different? And he had just one word for them in response to that. He said, that is the command of the master. That is the commandment of the master. Love one another. So my dear faithful, this is truly our faith. This is our belief. This is what has marked the true Christians, the true Catholics throughout all of the ages. All of the martyrs, they demonstrated that charity even towards those that persecuted them. I'm sure you know the story of the great Carmelite martyrs of Compiègne. It's worth reading if you have not yet read it. It's the book called To Quell the Terror. It's perhaps been cited from other sermons. But these, these Carmelites certainly demonstrated towards their, their revolutionary captors a great charity that surprised them, that shocked the, the, the revolutionaries. They could not understand this. And that is the charity of Christ manifested, always new, always unexpected, always the mark of the true disciples of Christ. There's only really one thing to say then, and that is to cite again St. John, my dear children, let us not love in word, neither with the tongue, but in deed and in truth. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.